Hey guys, I finally got to read chapter 11 and 12, so I wanted to go over it with you. Before I start, I wanted to make sure that you know, if you're not reading this book with us, you are welcome to join us in discussion, but I've had many people make comments and start conversations that um, are only going off of what I'm sharing, and I'm not sharing every line of this book. You know, I'm only sharing tiny little tidbits from the things that that just really pop out at me. And the people going through this study with me are doing the same thing. We're not laying out the whole book. So it's kind of impossible to argue by definition, not argue in a hostile manner, but just argue uh, about something that I'm saying if you're not reading the book, you know, cause there's a lot that could defend or make a uh, sense of what I'm saying better if you're reading the book with us. So just want to throw that out there for people that are joining us, please do, but don't cut to any conclusions cause you have this much information from the whole book. You know, I'm only sharing 10 things that stuck out to me about the chapter and people that are reading the book are doing the same in the comments section. So if you want the info, read the book or ask instead of, you know, cut to conclusions and, and start a, an argument. So with that said, let's cover chapter 11 and 12. And um, 11 was about forgiveness. And it started off very hard for me. I... This story that she shared about the couple that she had worked night shift for a week and then she came home and it was her day off and she was at home alone relaxing and she was going to watch a movie and she found a pornography tape in the VCR, this was back in the day, um, about teen orgies and then she ran to her husband's job to show him what she had found thinking it was their sons and she was so frustrated with him for not having um been better about keeping an eye on the kids and he said that it was his and then the next sentence is they're christians and they're involved with the youth at church i don't know how i feel about any of that <laughs> i'm just like uh really you're christians and that's what you're doing okay this is not the topic of this chapter or this book but I I shared that with my husband and he was like uh, you know we don't know their hearts I know that but scripture tells us what evidence should be seen in our lives if we're believers and the evidence doesn't line up very well so I was really taken back by that story uh, and yeah you know he might be a believer, but what in the world is he doing if he is a believer? And why is he involved with the youth at church knowing? I, I don't know. It just doesn't really fit. It's a very, it's like, doesn't fit, doesn't look. So I don't want anybody to read that and think, oh, that's how, you know, it might be in a Christian home. I don't think so. <laughs> no Christian man should be living that secret lie. And if they say they're believers, they better double check because the life is not lining up. Uh, that is bad. Um, I mean, Paul Washer says fleeing sexual immorality is Christianity 101. If you're not fleeing sexual immorality, then you really, really got to check if you're a believer because that is like the first thing that scripture speaks to about following Christ over and over and over again. So that is Christianity 101. You might be a theologian and have preached 50,000 sermons and all this other stuff, but if you are not fleeing sexual immorality, you may not be a believer. Um, and I'm with Paul Washer on that, I agree. So just wanna side note that, but back to the story, this poor wife, what a devastating situation the frustration the betrayal the bitterness that has the huge risk of taking root in her heart my goodness and um yes she is called to forgive as hard as that is to say and think on something like that um 
the Lord can give us the strength to forgive, even in the most devastating situations. Um, and then I do want to, I, I did write here, she says, forgiveness doesn't mean turning the blind eye. Of course not. That doesn't mean my husband does all these horrible things against me and sins against the Lord. I forgive you. No, that's not forgiving. If your husband's in sin or your husband's hurting you in some way and you need to talk about it, talk about it. Of course. Forgiveness is not holding a grudge when you've been wronged. Um, that destroys because it becomes bitterness and it destroys. So we must mortify bitterness. I talk about that constantly. I've also said this many times. Every divorce starts from unforgiveness. It starts from unaddressed sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Every divorce... If you were to go all the way back, 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 back to the first little tick of the road that started towards divorce, it was bitterness. It was unforgiveness. It was unaddressed sin. Sin that you did not fight. You just let it go. And then it grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And then it became this monster that there, you feel hopeless, you know? So don't let that tick. <laughs> Start that road. You stop it. Every single time it starts, you stop it and don't let that road ever be paved because it will end up in divorce. Um, oh, the computer thing. That was interesting. The woman's and men's little humorous computer, if they should call a computer a he or a she. I thought the guys was humorous, you know, but... Uh, I'm sorry, when the the list the women made about the men and then the, the list the men made about the women, the list the men made was humorous, right? I didn't sense any bitterness, harshness, unkindness in any of their funny lists. It was just funny, like, ah, oh, you know, like you're trying me, you're messing with me. The women's list was harsh, disrespectful, bitter, ugly. So I don't even think that that was... The point that she was coming, uh, that she was making, she was making the point that we should be convicted about some of the things that the men, uh, yeah, number four, the smallest mistakes are stored in long-term memory. That was her point. My point, in addition to that, is women look at the bitterness and the disrespect that comes out of women's mouths about men. The men didn't do that. The men in these lists seem like the victims being cornered and a mistreated and unkindness from the women. Um, I think that should be convicting too. Um, and then I wrote decide to forgive. That's where she, yeah. One of the th things was deciding to forgive. So prayer, grace, grace, grace. And I also put that Forgiveness may not always, you may not always feel it, just like love. You may not always feel love, but you can decide to act out love. We need to decide to act out forgiveness. And it might be a, something that you have to decide to do every single day. Um, it's so funny. People are like, forgive and forget, forgive and forget. I don't know if that's possible. I can remember very vividly many of the things that have hurt me tremendously in this life. Do I sit around and dwell on them and, you know, ah, just let it go crazy in my brain? I should have said this. I would say this if I saw them today. I would do this. I would do that. Or do I forgive? Choose to forgive every single time that it comes to your mind. Um, we have offended God immensely and he forgives us. How can we withhold forgiveness? I have a story too personal to share. But someone in my life apologized to me for really um, betraying me, I guess. And in this same exact situation, people in my position have never forgiven. Feeling completely entitled to never forgive because look how wronged they were. How dare you do that to me? I will never forgive you because of what you did. And when this person forget, uh, asked me um, to forgive them, they're not believers, I, my answer to them was, I love the Lord, 
and the Lord has forgiven me everything. How can I not forgive you? Of course I forgive you. Of course I do. And the only reason I can is because, and then I shared the gospel. <laughs> Let me throw that in there while you're listening, right? So they're still not believers, but they've heard the gospel and they know why I forgive them. It's not because of me. It is not because of me. I am nothing. And Christ forgives me. I will forgive you too. We need to do that for our husbands in these tiny little offenses and in the big ones. Asking for forgiveness. I've heard so many times, I, I, I don't know if this is in the book, but I wrote this down. There are many women that come to me like, I've been doing this and this and this and this and this, and he's still. It's like they expect to fix everything they've destroyed in one week of effort. Uh, no, it's gonna take a lot longer to fix what you've destroyed. Um, it's funny when you say, I'm sorry, or, you know, please forgive me for this. I'm going to change or I'm going to do better at this. That you think everything's going to just snap into perfect, you know, and go your way. And then you get frustrated and angry because it's not going perfect. Well, there's a lot of damage to repair. So deal with it. You know, it's the consequences of our foolishness and our bad decisions. And we have to be gracious and loving and patient and let God work in your heart and in that person's heart whoever the person is. So to have grace on the other person, it, it's so funny. Think about how many times in your life you've been like, I'm, you know, you've apologized and the other person doesn't snap back into, you know, having a good attitude. Well, I said, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about here. Give the person a minute, you know, give them a minute. It doesn't just happen like magic. I forgive you or I'm sorry aren't magical words. And then the next thing was the letting go for good, the balloon story. I thought that was interesting. Um, I can't imagine doing that, but maybe I told my husband, I'm like, this sounds so funny. But you know, maybe if I was in a really, really, really hard place in my marriage and we were bitter and that that could have been a very profound experience together. So I'm not bashing it. I just, since I'm not there, it seems kind of like, oh my goodness, seriously. But I don't want to be that insensitive. Um, it was obviously very profound for them and I don't want to disregard that. So, and maybe it spoke to you. Maybe stuff like that. It, I'm not very dramatic. So that's like dramatic to me. Uh, but people are. There are many dramatic people in this world. And things like that speak to their souls. So go for it, you know. Mm. I don't want my shake to melt. Okay, chapter 12. Outserve each other. How many times have you heard me say this, you guys? Stop keeping score on who did what when. Just serve your husband. Serve him with joy. Serve him with love and that should give you joy and hopefully in an ideal situation he's going to be out serving he's going to be trying to out serve you too and it, sometimes it might take a minute for them to catch on but when they see wow look at all the stuff my wife does i want to hook her up too you know and they might come back the suitcase story <laughs> good grief that's something good to think about i would love to hear what you guys thought about that the lady leaving the suitcase out on purpose. I definitely have never gone to the extent of putting something that Hector's left out because he forgot to for a week and a half in the way to bother him, you know, to get him back. But I've left it there, not out of frustration, just out of, I don't care. He said he was going to put it away. I'll let him like that, you know. Um, so there have been times where I've put it away. And there have also been times where I've said, hey, are you going to get this? And he says, yes. And I just leave it there. For example, right now, there are three sleeping bags thrown on the floor in, okay, this is hilarious. So a month ago, we purged. And part of that was putting the sleeping bags in garbage bags and taping it up and labeling it whose was whose. Okay, that was like three weeks ago maybe. Last weekend, I left town. And the day I left, they pulled the sleeping bags out of the attic Took them out of the bags that were taped and labeled just three weeks later and camped out 
on the deck. And then I got home and I was like, hilarious. The tent that we put away, the sleeping bags, everything's out. And I was like, let's see how long it takes before we put it back in the attic, right? Like just playing around and we laughed. Well, I left it where it was. And I was like, are you going to put these away? And he's like, yeah, oh yeah, I forgot. I'll just put them in trash bags this time. I was like, okay, cool. Well, then he went back to work. The weekend ended. He went back to work. And it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today's Monday. They're still out. Am I going to pick it up? Nope. <laughs> Am I mad about it? Nope. Am I bothered? Nope. Am I bitter? Nope. I just really, 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 really don't care at all. I don't care. <laughs> That's just the truth. So what I'm saying to you is choose not to care. Just don't care. And if you do care, just ask again. Hey, can you do this? And if you really, really, really care and you can't count on them doing it, then you do it. Whatever. You know, like why choose? Why let something bother you and mess up your day that is like not even alive, you know? I don't know. That's just how I think about it. All right, Philippians 2, 1 through 8. Such good scripture. Oh, I love it. And all, what I wrote here was, our husbands are our brothers in Christ. So let's live out that passage to them as well. Not just to all the other Christians in the world. To them as well. Read it. It's so good. And I think that's all I wrote down. Yep. That last uh, the little quote that she put, duty makes us do things well, but love makes us do things beautifully. I would love to hear what you think of that. That was thought provoking for me. I wasn't sure what I thought about it because obviously there's times that you just do what's got to be done, right? You just do your work and there's not necessarily joy in it and like every moment you're not thinking oh this is such a blessing from god thank you lord you're not always thinking that every single moment i hope that those thoughts cross your mind often um but you know yeah and then there's been times where i'm delighted and so emotionally moved and just loved with with um Sorry, I got a message. Love that I'm able to serve my family in the ways that I'm able to. And I truly feel the joy and the love and the delight. And I just praise God, you know. And there's times like that too. And those times might be sloppy and messy and out of order. But that's better than perfect and orderly and just with the duty, right? So, I don't know. But of course, we want to do the job that's got to be done. And ultimately, if we know why we're doing it, even if we're not thinking every second of the day, this is for you, Lord, this is for you, I'm working into you, it's okay. You know why you're doing your job. You know why you're working hard. You know who you are serving. Actually, it's Christ. Then I think it's good. So I'd love to hear what you guys thought of those two chapters. And next time around, we'll finish that section off doing chapter 13 and 14 I believe yes so we'll be done with section three doing chapter 13 and 14 have a great day